Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. After my last couple of videos on the Khafre Pyramid, I've noted a number of comments from viewers asking whether or not this pyramid is going to be muon scanned, in the same way the Great Pyramid and Bent Pyramid have in the past decade or so. And that seems to be because many people find it hard to believe the Khafre Pyramid, an enormous structure that is only just a few metres shorter than the Great Pyramid, is just a large stack of limestone blocks, with no chambers, notable passages or grand galleries incorporated into the masonry. The known internal layout is concentrated at the base of the pyramid, with a burial chamber, horizontal passageway, lower chamber and the lower descending passageway, all cut from the natural limestone bedrock. This means the only internal structure that's created within the masonry is this upper inclined passageway, and also the masonry roof of the burial chamber. And that leaves the enormous mass of limestone. So what's inside it? In 2016, the Scan Pyramid's mission discovered the North Face Corridor in the Great Pyramid, which was confirmed this year with the insertion of an endoscopic camera. In 2017, they then discovered the Big Void, high up inside the pyramid, some 40 metres long and above the Grand Gallery. These findings have left people wondering when scientists are going to use this state-of-the-art technology on Giza's Middle Pyramid. Well, you may be surprised to learn that the Khafre Pyramid was muon scanned, and no, not in the 21st century, but way back in the 1960s. Yes, in 1965, nearly 60 years ago, scientists sent a proposal to the Egyptian authorities asking if they could probe the second pyramid by detecting cosmic rays that pass through it. As the scientists said, quote, the principal novelty of the proposed cosmic ray detectors involved their ability to measure the angles of arrival of penetrating cosmic ray muons with great precision over a large sensitive area. End quote. So amazingly, far from being some new 21st century state of the art innovation, muography, the science of muon detection to show any cavities in large structures, whether pyramids or even volcanoes, has been known about for decades. Due to the non-destructive nature of the experiment, the Egyptian authorities in the 1960s accepted the proposal. So, in 1968, even before the Beatles had released Yellow Submarine, muon detectors were placed inside the Khafre Pyramid Burial Chamber, also known as the Belzoni Chamber, and data was being recorded on magnetic tape in the scientist's laboratory building that was set up a few hundred metres from the two largest Giza pyramids. The technology in an archaeological context was brand new and cutting edge, and in the paper released by the scientists in 1970, they explain how they tested the technology. They went into so much detail, and in all honesty it was over my head, but apparently they could successfully detect very specific features with fantastic accuracy, clearly mapping out the four corners of the Khafre Pyramid, as well as the shape of the cased area at the top of the pyramid, and that's from detectors placed very low down inside the Khafre burial chamber. Over the past decade, muon detectors have been placed in various positions inside the Great Pyramid. The Queen's Chamber, Grand Gallery, Relieving Chambers, Descending Passageway and Subterranean Chamber. But in 1968, the detectors were only placed inside the Khafre Burial Chamber, which limits the field of view to this specific area, which is in the shape of a cone. Any structures inside the masonry outside of this cone would not be picked up. But being relatively central at the very base of the structure, this is a fantastic position to detect any cavities in the pyramid above. The paper says, quote, We have no doubt that we could detect a king's chamber anywhere above the Belzoni chamber, within a cone of half angle 35 degrees from the vertical. 
If the second pyramid architect had placed a grand gallery, king's chamber and queen's chamber in the same location as they did the Cheops pyramid, the signal from each of these three cavities would have been enormous. End quote. Based on that, I assume that this is the capture area of the muon detectors in the Khafre pyramid. And what did they discover? Absolutely nothing. The scientists say, quote, We therefore conclude that no chambers of the size seen in the four large pyramids of the 4th dynasty are in our field of view above the Belzoni chamber. End quote. So, this may seem definitive, that there is nothing to find inside the Khafre pyramid, but, in the conclusion, the paper says that they only explored 19% of the volume of the second pyramid. And no, this doesn't seem a lot, but if there were any unexplored chambers inside the Khafre pyramid, we would expect to find them within this 19%. The scientists were studying the central section of the pyramid, above the main Khafre burial chamber, and in this central zone, no chambers the size of the Great Pyramids, King's Chamber, Queen's Chamber or a Grand Gallery were discovered. Of course, if there was a hidden internal structure inside this pyramid, based on our knowledge of pyramid design, you would expect to find evidence for it in the lower half of the pyramid, in and around this section. It means that yes, technically, there could still be hidden chambers and passages inside the pyramid, in the parts that were not scanned, but in all honesty, if we're thinking logically, just how likely is it? With what we've learned, and following the science and our knowledge of the internal layout of pyramids, I personally don't think there is anything to find inside the Khafre Pyramid. New scans could be undertaken. Maybe the technology has vastly improved, but maybe not, because the accuracy in the 1960s was testable, and the methods did seem to be sound. But I do think it would be great if we could put new muon plates inside the Khafre burial chamber, the upper descending passageway and also the lower chamber, and the results would show us a greater volume of the Khafre pyramid interior. They could also use gas detectors outside the pyramid. Maybe this work is being undertaken. It is quite hard to find out. But with nothing noted in the central section in the 1960s, I'm not surprised that this pyramid is last in line to be examined, because the likelihood of finding anything substantial is minimal. I do think we're looking at a mass of stacked limestone blocks covering subterranean chambers and passages. And this may surprise many of the viewers, but it's not too dissimilar to other notable pyramids. The internal chambers and passages in the Bent Pyramid are mainly below ground level. The Red Pyramid chambers are inside the masonry but right at the base. The Menkore chambers are subterranean. And here we can see a cross section of the Pyramid of Maidum. The internal layout of the Great Pyramid is truly unique. And just because from the outside, the two large Giza pyramids are relatively similar in appearance, it doesn't mean they're likely to be similar inside. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.